Hello everyone, this is John Buck. In this video we're going to talk about the discrete time property of time invariance. Time invariance is what happens to, a, to the, what, what does the system do when the input signal is delayed. If the system is time invariant, the output is shifted or delayed by the same amount. This is one of the two most important properties we'll be seeing this semester along with linearity. Uh, and so it's important that we get the definition straight in our head. And for many people, this is the trickiest one because it really uh, test your ability to understand how functions work carefully when you do substitutions. So we'll see how that develops. Okay, so switching over to the whiteboard. Again, today's property is, is today's top, the video topic for today is time invariance in this video. And again, just to remind you, because it's important, we'll see them again in the five main system properties, linearity, time invariance, causality, stability, and invertibility. In this video right now, this is the one we're talking about. I'll have separate videos for the definitions of each one and then still more videos showing you examples of, of how we prove these are true when we or, or not true when we get an unknown system. When someone says, hey, is this a time invariant system? I'll show you an example of a process you can go through to prove whether or not it is. Okay, so again, the main idea for time invariance is if, if the output, if, if when the input to the system is x of n, the output is y of n, then when the input is delayed by some amount of n naught samples, the output is delayed by the same amount. And this has to be true for every input and every delay. If I were going to uh, make this a little bit more of a, a graphical version, like we did in some of the others, we could say that, that if right, I put x of n into the system, I guess we're using S in this video for the system. S is for system. And we get out Y of N. Then if I take X of N, put it first into a box that is a, a delay by N naught samples. And then put it into the system. The output I get maybe we'll call this new input f of n, the output g of n that comes from that new input has to be the same output I had above delayed by the same amount if the system is time invariant. And so to show a few examples of that, in this case, uh, here's, two here's two systems that we specify by difference equation of y of n is equal to the square of the input plus three times x of n delayed by two. Uh, this one, it turns out, we will use green for happy, this one is time invariant. I'm not going to prove this now. I'll show examples of other, other proofs in later videos. But just so you get an idea, this one, the second one, y of n equals x of two minus n, is not time invariant. And again, this isn't a rigorous proof. It's just to show you a couple examples of, of, of what's going on. Pretty much everything that happens in time here is either unchanged or a normal delay, whereas this involves a flip in time. So a very good clue when you're just starting out to look at as you build practice and intuition, it's not a rigorous proof. You won't get full credit on an exam, but a good place to start thinking about it is when you're thinking about time invariance, what's going on inside the brackets. If the things inside the brackets involve flipping in time, like a minus n, or they involve squaring or cubing n inside the brackets, not outside like this. But for example, another uh, another example that would be uh, nonlinear, I'm sorry, non-time, that would be not time invariant, would be if the output at each time is the input at the time squared. This is again a well-defined discrete time system this would also be not time invariant because if I shifted by a certain amount, we'd see the shift would be different. And again, this isn't meant to be proofs. Those are in separate video. But to give you a couple examples of systems and whether they're time invariant or not. And again, the thing I look at is often what's going on inside the brackets on the right-hand side of the system. Here, everything's pretty safe. It's either the same signal, the same time, or it's a delayed version of time. But here I've got this, this minus n means a flip in time. This means a square in time. Things like that tend to be the things that lead 
into trouble with uh, with time invariance and turns out to make delays that aren't the same. We'll see more in the proof video. But uh, again, to wrap up and finish here, this video is about time invariance, one of the two most important properties. And again, if uh, the main idea of time invariance is if I take any input and delay it or shift it by a certain amount, the output has to shift the same way, almost like they're locked together, that if I slide one in one direction by so many samples, the other, the output, if I slide the input by so much, the output has to slide together with it. Okay, so that's it for all now. I'll see you all next time.